We just started a new little adventure. These are a couple of e-bikes. They're from the electric company. They're 3.0 XP step through. So since we got these, we need a way to carry them. Instead of inside in the RV taking up space or outside on a rack where they get muddy and damp and rained on and subjected to uh, the elements, we decided we would pick up this cute little Wells Cargo trailer. It's six feet long by four feet wide. And we had to get one that had a long tongue and a bull nose instead of a pointed front because of the slide on our motorhome. So we got it home yesterday, and here's Steve right now working on the ground for the wiring, and he's fixing that up. And we took a little run to Menards to get supplies and materials, because you know us, we're gonna make a few changes. So here's the back end. First of all, we're going to paint it. I grabbed some light gray porch floor enamel. We're going to paint it, give it a good coat, make it nice and light and bright. And then we're going to run some LED lighting up here in the roof instead of just this one single little 12 volt light. And we picked up some brackets and uh, hooks and some different things because we have some ideas. We're going to transfer some of the load out of the motor home into the back of here along with the e-bikes. So we're going to transfer some things that are a little heavier and put them on some shelving in here with the bikes. So... You'll have to stay tuned because I'm going to keep videoing each segment of what we're doing. Put it all together and maybe make a cute little video. Post it on YouTube. Oh, these are some brackets here that have been used to haul a ladder on the outside. And we'll have to kind of keep the bolts there because there's already holes through to the outside. Because the <clears throat> guy we bought it from used it to move here from Colorado and he bought from somebody in Colorado that had a ladder rack on the outside. He used it to move here and once he got all moved here he didn't need it anymore. So he, he sold it to us for a really good price. We only paid 1300 bucks. That's not too bad. So stay tuned. This is our newest project. Okay, Steve said he thinks that he has the ground problem all figured out with the wiring. And now he's going to test it. This is just the simple little four flat plug-in on the trailer. We have the adapter to go to the round circular 7-pin plug-in on the RV. Well, in this case, we're just using our Saturn view. Isn't that funny? We own a Saturn view, and we've pulled it behind our Winnebago view, a view with a view. And look what we have here. Da-da-da-da, we have lights. Da-da-da-da, we have lights. And lights. And lights. Oh, there's little bulbs out, or maybe they're meant to be that way. I don't know. Okay, it is Wednesday, and it's time to start painting the interior of our trailer. Let's see if I can get this thing to zoom correctly. There we go. Okay, we're all set up here. Steve added a little buddy heater to just keep it kind of warm inside here. Although it's not too bad in the garage, Steve just recently 
insulated and drywalled the entire garage so it helps keep the heat in. There's our canoe hung from the ceiling out of the way until next spring. So it's not too bad out here. We're looking at 50 degrees. So I think that'll be okay to get started. The plan is to paint the inside wood on the walls. And I suppose that ceiling panel too. And then just before I'm done, after the second coats, I'll do the floor. Looks like there'd already been a coat of paint on the floor at one time. And then of course the back surface of the door too. So, time to get to work. Well, I'm getting on the first coat. It's definitely going to need two coats. Kind of looks blue on the video, but really, it's Battleship Gray. We chose this color so I can use the leftover paint on our front steps and the pergola because it matches. It's the same color. So, so far I'm using about a quarter of a can. Steve's over here working on, he's changing my handlebars from the straight ones to some curved ones. Are the curved ones handy, Steve? Those curve back a little further for me. And here's the little supervisor on the lawn chair. Hey, Ben Ben. Benny. Oh, she's watching Steve. She's got to make sure he does a good job. She knows I do a good job painting. Okay, here we are on the last section of the floor. It's my paint camera. Let's see. There, get it in focus. There we go. Okay, let's see what kind of job we did. This is the first coat. Looks pretty good to me. But definitely needs a second coat. So what do you think, little girl? Does that meet your approval? Is it time to go in and make some late breakfast or early lunch? Here's Mr. Stevio putting on my new handlebars. He's going to lean back a little further back towards me. For him, straight out with his long arms, it's pretty good. But for me, I ordered this extra set that bend backwards a little bit. And here's my bike mechanic. So I suppose now i got to sit on the bike and make sure I don't get paint on it. We can adjust them, huh? Yeah, you have to figure out how you want all, all your controls. Yeah, too. put my handlebars back on and my cell phone holder and my little bell. Thank you, dear. Yeah, it's, it's not for now. Okay, well, I'm waiting for the second coat of paint to dry. Steve's opening up a box I just got from Amazon. This is my extra wide tushy seat and my bicycle handlebar bag. When we went to test some bikes with Chris, his wife had this kind of seat for her tushy butt. Isn't that cool? I thought it was kind of nice. So we're going to try that out. Okay, let's see my handlebar bag. Oh, is that nice? Yeah. So hold it from the top. There. So it's kind of like a little handlebar bag with compartments and things. And then you can unhook it and take it into a store with you. There's a long strap that you can use. And you can take it with you like a purse. Well, those are my new toys. And Steve got my handlebars on. And all adjusted. Everything set to my liking. So now they step back further than the other ones. And while we were working, our little supervisor here made sure we did a good, good job. Right, girl? So, and here's the second coat drying on the trailer. I also did the back side of the door. That's got two coats. I taped around the aluminum edge. 
So next, you're going to get to see how we're going to arrange it inside to comfortably hold both of our e-bikes and some of our other camping gear. Steve had to cut some of the steel down from two feet to 20 inches to go up in this angled part of the bull nose. I guess he's going on this side. I thought he'd go on the other side. Oh, now you're working in the shadows. Okay. Maybe we should put in them LED lights. Yeah, maybe we should. Yeah, maybe we should. So we're doing two rows of shelving in here with plywood bases. I get to paint again. There will be cross bracing too and something special we're going to do to fit the bikes in there. Okay, our next step is to put these upper hanging racks way up high in the trailer before we add the front shelves. Make it easier to get up into the corner. We made these side hanging rails from pieces of this one and a half by one and a half angled steel with holes punched in it. Then we took two cargo hooks and we covered them with pipe wrap. And a good hint is put a little squirt of WD-40 in the middle of the pipe wrap before you slide it on. Then once we slid it on, we screwed it down tight with locking nuts from the back side. And they are spaced correctly apart to hold these lawn chairs. These are the recliner lawn chairs. If we hung them uh, vertically, they'd be too long in the way of the bikes. So we're going to hang them horizontally on this side of the trailer. These are the two top rails with padded hooks they are going to hold our lawn chairs. Currently we keep them at the back of the motor home in the back compartment. But it means we also have to get the chairs out before we put the bedroom slide out. Otherwise you have to crawl underneath the slide to get out the lawn chairs. So now we're going to carry them back here. And they go perfectly above where the bikes are going to be, where the cargo area is. So here's two of them already on this side. And the bottom, we have a bungee hook with a cargo tie down to keep them from flopping around. So these are screwed directly to the frame and not to the wall itself. Good job, Steve, even down on your knees. The cargo trailer is just about five feet high, which is a tad bit too short for my six foot three Stevio. And there you have it. There's the one. The other one, our supervisor's sitting on. I think we got to make her move. Are you going to move? There. Now she moved to the other one. Huh. That wasn't what she wanted. And now here's the other chair. Good job. Now we'll put another cargo tie down and bungee cord. So that's going to work really well, Steve. Glad you thought of it.
Okay, this is going to be our first shelf. We made a cardboard template, which is over there now. And we drew the lines and we're going to lay the shelf into place. There will be notches cut out here, covered with insulated pipe wrap to protect the edges that will slide right around the forks of the bike or the posts of the bikes. And of course I will paint the shelf to make it look good. Now he's gonna sand the edges so it's not rough. This assistant doesn't like noisy power tools. Here goes the second shelf. There we go, dropped into place. And now he's going to add an underneath support brace just like he did down here on the shelf. And see the little foam inserts there? That's for the bikes to snug into. And that's going to be a little lip edge that will keep things from falling out too, hopefully. Okay, I covered the edge of this plywood shelf with this pipe insulation foam wrap stuff and we glued it down with a bead of adhesive caulk and now this is where the two front stems of the bikes snug in too tightly when they're parked and now we'll measure and figure out on the floor for the D-rings and the bungee cords that hold them secure. And here they are, all wedged into place. I think that's a nice snug fit. The bikes don't move at all. And the padding on the shelf here is just for us bumping ourselves against the rough pieces of plywood. And then after this, we're going to work on the cargo net that's going to go between all these brackets and make sure everything stays on these shelves and doesn't fall down during transit. Our test run will be with my GoPro hooked up back here and the lights on so we can see how things move when we drive down the road. Now we're putting in the tie downs by each tire for the bungee cords. Okay, now do you want to put the bungee on? I'm putting it. So there's two bands of bungee holding down the tire. And the reason why it's so far forward on the tire is that will help snug it up tighter to the front shelf where it's nested in the U. I'm sure the more we do this, the easier it will get. There we go. So there we are, bungee down through the rim with a soft webbed bungee that 
Actually, we should maybe slide that tire just a little bit. There, that looks pretty good. Oop, move my hand from the camera. Well, there you have it. Now, the last step we have is the mesh cargo net that's going to go up over these shelves so those items never fall down on the bikes. We added a few pieces of styrofoam. It's wonderful that electric packed their bikes with lots of styrofoam. We felt we should protect the uh, headlights when the handlebars are folded down. So here against the wall, when Electric sent us these bikes, they had a special guard that snaps on the axle. So we're just going to snap that on each time we put it in here, and that prevents the bike from ever hitting the wall. Okay, we got everything in and secured, and we're going to take it out and hook it up to the motorhome. Now. There, one-handed. And we picked up the correct drop for drop hitch. And we did also buy an anti-rattle device we're going to put on here too. We just didn't yet. Once the wire harness is plugged in, we will have lights inside of the trailer. And our purpose for buying a trailer with such a long tongue is that this slide here comes out three feet with our bed in at night. And that way we don't have to unhook the trailer at night if we're just going to put out the slide, like if we're traveling en route somewhere. We, you know, of course, want to leave the trailer hooked up. So, here, I'll back up and get a full view shot of our Winnebago view. And it has a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds. And we kind of totaled up our stuff in the trailer and we're about... How many pounds did we think we were? The trailer is about 700, and we we're thinking what about 200 of stuff? So that's pretty good, right, Steve? Sure. Okay, we're ready to go for a test drive. Everything's hooked up. We stuck my little GoPro camera up here on a bracket on the door, and we put the interior light on while we drive. Of course, we normally wouldn't be doing that, but we want to see what's going on back here while we're driving down the road for the first time. Okay, we're going to lock her up. Okie doke. Let's go give her a try. Okay, it's a beautiful fall day in middle of November. And this is the maiden voyage of our mini garage being hauled behind our Winnebago view. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And we have a pretty steep apron. Now you think he's going to stop and let me get in? Okay, all the lights are working. 
Looks good to me. Hitch looks good. Okay, we're gonna go for a ride. Okay, so here we go for our ride. We won't know what's going on back there because I don't know yet how to set up my GoPro for being a dash cam monitor. But here we can watch at least in our rear view camera the trailer tracking right along. But we won't know till we get back home and review the footage after our ride. So this is a test ride of our little mini garage. Okay, here's a little test going over the railroad tracks by our house. Let's see how that looks. Nobody coming. Oh. What? The guy stopped. Something fell off the trailer. No. Oh. Better stop and check. Okay, it was just the latch on our lock needed to be fastened tight. The guy noticed it behind us. So that's done now correctly. And here we go. It's kind of a cloudy day. Feels like a snowy day, but it's still a little warm. It's what, in the mid-40s? Not too bad. Let's say 44 degrees. So here we are riding in our motorhome. See back there's the bed that folds out when that slide goes out. And there's another slide there for the love seat. another bump. So there, we got two good bumps to try out. Oh, one more set of railroad tracks on the way back home. Okay, we drove over some of the roughest roads in our little town. A couple sets of railroad tracks. Oh yeah, plenty of clearance. And there we are, home again, home again, jiggity jig. Here is our back bedroom slide. Must be double checking something in there. We always double check around the slide, make sure nothing fell down during transit. There. So this is why we couldn't do an everyday cargo trailer that had a really pointy front because they didn't have enough tongue length. So this works out perfect. Beautiful, dear. Good job. Okay, here's the final test. We gotta unlock it, open it up and see if anything moved around. Look at that, everything is fine. Oh, the light lens came off, the light. Ta-da! Here we are on kind of a windy Sunday. We're getting ready with the last few things and getting ready to go camping. It's kind of warm. There's a warm front blowing in. We have brand new tires put on. Steve double checked the inflation and he's got the torque correct on the lug nuts. The bearings are all greased and ready to go. And we have our tire pressure monitor sensors on. Everything's calibrated, ready to roll. Also, in the last video, last segments, I wasn't filming when Steve put this in, but this is a lockable hitch bolt that locks it onto our tongue. Also, we have the hitch itself 
is locked way under here. That piece is locked. And this is that anti-rattle device I was talking about earlier. So this is all on, ready to go. Wheels are torqued, we got a spare. Everything's ready. And now we just have to finish loading up groceries and clothes and the dog. And away we go. We've got a couple ideas in mind. Not quite sure yet, but that's the adventure.